there's some really quite good evidence that shows where people have been able to have conversations about um, their preferences for care towards the end of life, uh, that they have a much better chance of actually um, having the sort of care that they would prefer and also a better chance of getting the care, being cared for in the, the place of their choice as well. It doesn't guarantee it, but, it, but there's really good evidence now showing that um, it, it, it does lead to better outcomes for people um, where it's possible to plan ahead. And really, if, if we don't talk, then we can't plan. One thing that's happening at the moment is uh, a new alliance called Good Life, Good Death, Good Grief. And it's an alliance of organisations and individuals which are trying to promote more openness in Scotland about death, dying and bereavement. If we're all just a little bit more open, it can be easier to uh, perhaps to support a friend or a relative or a neighbour who's either bereaved or living with advanced disease. Um, it can be easier to have those conversations to find out what sort of care people would like. There's a similar initiative going on south of the border in England um, called Dying Matters. Again, they've got a, a good website. Um, very similar aims to try and promote and encourage um, uh, discussion, getting people talking about end of life issues and what their preferences are. It's all about thinking ahead and planning ahead. We sat down with the social worker and planned Kira's end of life, exactly what we wanted. It was a very difficult process to do. Um, it was exhausting. We had no concept of how emotionally tiring it was going to be but it was exhausting. But what it meant was that we planned everything as far as we could, from the fact we wanted to be in the hospice, we wanted Kathleen to be there if Kathleen wanted to be there. We went through um, what would happen afterwards, who, what members of our family we wanted to be around, um, planning the funeral with regards to where it would be, who would conduct the service, what music we'd have, absolutely everything. As far as we could, we planned everything. Um, and it was, it was quite a process because we had to make decisions about was it going to be a religious ceremony, was it not going to be a religious ceremony, if it wasn't, how were we going to do it, um, who did we want to take part in the ceremony, would Mark and I speak at the ceremony and what did, what did that mean? Um, because it's something that we both very strongly want to do, but the reality of doing it is obviously something we need to be mindful of. So even making plans as to on the day, if we couldn't do it, who was going to step in and read out what we would want to read out. So we did, we did everything, or we felt that we had done everything we could to cover that. And that was very much about my concern being that when Kira passed away, we wouldn't make the right decisions for her and that we would end up with a funeral which I didn't think would reflect her or kind of do her proud, I suppose. So that's why we did it. And um, quite a process, quite an experience to do. Um, it's all recorded. It's all recorded at the hospice. It can be changed at any time if we change our mind about things. And we have changed our mind about some things over the time because as Kira has got older, um, kind of our own thoughts about how we want to do it has changed. Um, but that, that's recorded and it means when the time comes we can concentrate on Kira and ourselves and not start to get tangled up in practical plans, which um, I just, I wouldn't want to be concentrating on that when the time comes. It's not just about um, something for people to think about uh, towards the end of their lives. Um, it can also be about thinking ahead at different points in your life. Maybe that if you've just had children, you may be for the first time thinking, oh, I wonder if I should sit down and make a will. Um, and it's, it may be something for us to think about at a time, perhaps uh, if we've got ageing parents and relatives, we want to try and talk to them and find out what sort of care and support they might want if their condition gets worse. So it's something for everybody, really. In the past year, I've got married and, um, I, and my wife's just had a baby girl. So all of that... Um, really brought home the need to sort of to plan and and to uh, to put things in place because now we're responsible for somebody else. Some people are, have their lives all organised um, and you know you'll have people who have their living wills organised years before and 
that's fine, you just bring it up to date, you just discuss it briefly with them again. Is this still what you want? Are there any changes you want to make there? The other thing was how do we capture our wishes and make our plans known? And that's where Final Fling comes in. We have been developing a portal, it's an online community. And what that gives us is um, easy access to very practical information, um, lots of experience from other people and tips about what you can do. There's a forum there for people to share experience. There's a workbook where you can capture your wishes and you can update those as you go, it's free to use. There's a safe deposit box so you can capture those essential bits of paperwork like a will, you can make an advanced decision, it doesn't cost anything, and keep it there. And again, you can update it as you change your mind, as your life changes. We all plan for different stuff and, it, and it's just that this shouldn't be any different. Mm -hmm. um, and, and as I said, you know, when, when you can sort of, when there's a different focus or you're doing it for someone else or something like that, then you, you can just treat it not totally dispassionately, but you can kind of approach it more evenly, maybe, and that makes it easier. And the easiest step for us was to take out life assurance. That was a kind of a basic thing. And there's almost something about taking out life assurance where you're admitting that you're going to die, but still nobody ever mentions it. And it, it was, you know, it was the first step in being able to say, OK, listen, we need life assurance. Um, what are, what are the other things we need to put into place? And, and there's still an element of where we think about in the distant future, but we know that it could happen at any time. It's like the thing about making any plan is that it doesn't stay in a drawer. You know, it's all plans need to evolve as things change and situations change. And, and I feel we've made a starting point and that and I don't know what's going to happen next or how th things will develop. But I do know that there's a provision for um, changing plans and, and building on them. Because nothing, you know, it's not like, it doesn't feel like when you make a plan like that and you organise something like that, that that's it, you're, you're bound to it. Or, okay, that's debt taken care of. Or something, you, you know, so it, um, but it's, good that there's a structure and a framework to, to deal with things. And that structure, I'm sure, will stand to us in the years to come. Um, and certainly it's one of those things that I'm learning because I'm in the kind of early stages of um, uh, fatherhood that anything you can control is a good thing because pretty much everything else you can't. <laughs> There's a great degree of control that it offers people at a time when they might not feel they have very much control otherwise in life and it offers them privacy and security and independence to go in and manage their own thoughts and their own wishes and make their plans. And having done that, it makes it easier for them to share. It's often easier to do that and then to talk about it with um, friends and family. Um, one of the critical things is it's updatable. So, and life does move on and life changes and our own thoughts and wishes change so you can make those changes all the time. And ultimately, we hope it will improve the quality of life. And the whole point of it is, sort out your affairs, don't have to think about them, get on with living your life.